I think, you know, one of the most important things that we talk about in harm reduction is um, relationship building um, and treating people that we know, either a family member, or friend or loved one, um, who is using well, with kindness and respect um, and compassion and meeting them where they're at. That's what that's what harm reduction is all about. So um, I think it's, you know, um, part part of that right now because of the dual public health emergencies is, you know, at least to be able to have open conversations uh, with at least one safe person uh, to ensure that, you know, that the person who's using is doing as best as they can, as I said, under the circumstances that they find themselves in in order to keep themselves safe. Um, for me, it's, it's uh, I, I think about um, learning and just continuing to learn as often as you possibly can. Um, and I say that because, you know, quite often in our, where our current awareness about substance use and addiction comes from, does come from, you know, not such good credible sources like the, the media, uh, pop culture, uh, movies, and, and those kinds of things. And it's way too easy, you know, to come across inaccurate information or possibly stigmatizing information through social media. Um, and I see this all the time on, in my own Facebook feed is where I'm, I come across a, a, a post that I think well-intentioned people share, but it's super stigmatizing to people who are using substances. And so I, I always invite people to, you know, not share those kinds of posts that, that are possibly stigmatizing. Um, so, you know, therein there's a call for to, to continue your learning, learning about substance use and also learning about harm reduction. You know, harm reduction has typically been mentioned just in a, a clinical health setting and a uh, political setting, uh, but making harm reduction conversations more home friendly uh, uh, and bringing them into the homes and bringing them into communities and everybody have, have engaging everybody in conversations around harm reduction and what it means to you, um, to you and your family, to you and your loved ones, to you and your friendship circles um, is a really great um, starting point. Uh, so learning about harm reduction and for, you know, Indigenous peoples, um, is to, you know, look at uh, indigenizing harm reduction. And in a time of, you know, this, this overdose crisis, there are a growing amount of resources and teachings that are shared by traditional knowledge keepers and elders and um, scholars and, and healthcare workers um, to kind of like take ownership um, and make uh, harm reduction resources more culturally relevant because when we're reflected in those resources, we're more inclined to, to use them and learn from them. Um, so I, I also recommend that, that folks, you know, look for Indigenous harm reduction resources. I think to expand upon, you know, that some of the resources that we have at FNHA, as, as Len mentioned, you know, there is a whole kind of framework around indigenizing harm reduction. So it speaks much more to people's kind of worldview and is more consistent with our, you know, holistic overall view of health and wellness. And, you know, there are literally like, there are many, many resources available on our website. And I would encourage people to go to the um, overdose response section of our website to check out all of the different um, categories of resources that are available. I'm, I'm thinking about, you know, the importance of having conversations too. Um, and I would also, you know, to, uh, when we're thinking about having conversations uh, with our loved ones who, to support our loved ones who are using substances, um, we also have resources on the First Nations Health Authority website around, you know, a conversations guideline, because sometimes, you know what, we love and care for our relatives and our loved ones so much that we, we often are, are afraid of them harming themselves or, or losing their life potentially. So it can be an emotionally charged conversation. But we'll, we don't want to necessarily bring that into the conversations when we're talking about substance use, because quite often those conversations can almost naturally um, take the form or shape of um, being fear-based or being shame-based. But we know that fear-based and shame-based conversations don't help um, engage in meaningful learning uh, uh, conversations. Rather, we want our conversations to be respectful, kind, reflective, and always on a land on a place of, of compassion. <laughs>